I'm taking this uh, quarter inch rod here and I've bent it to fit the contour of that rip in the exhaust. And that'll give me a surface to weld to and then uh, get this uh, plugged up with the liquid metal. All right. Now, let's see if I can approach leg arms welding abilities. Uh, that's a given, not yet. Okay, let's take a look at it. It's not pretty, but functional. All right, good. Well, I'll let her down and then I'll start it up and we'll see what it sounds like. Now it sounds normal. Cool. Okay. I finally have some time set apart or set aside to put the ECM back on this truck. I took it off the tractor over there, put the new one on. Oh, I think we're gonna need to haul some wheat uh, to finish out some contracts this month, which is June. So, Put the ESAM back on the truck, make sure it starts and runs. If it's good, then I got some other things going on today. So, knock it off on the list. <laughs> Come on guys, I knew it was gonna run. I just had to prove to you guys it was gonna run. No, the reason why I wanted to make sure it ran is you assume things and usually assuming gets you far in life. So if I assumed it would run and I just put it on left when we need it and it doesn't start, uh, then I have to figure it out. Well, let's just say if I got a wire pulled wrong or something's not connected correctly, it might have some issues. So the fact that it runs, I know a peace of mind. Awesome, check that off the list. And I think, I think on that little bud, I think my problem is uh, why I wouldn't start the other day, is it's sucking air out of an old hose that gave, came from the fuel tank to, uh, to the fuel pump, and it's just not getting the fuel it needs to start. So, new ECM on the other one, and uh, change the fuel line. I just have to get a air compressor or a truck and force the air into the fuel tank so it can pressurize the fuel up through the line, go to the fuel filter, and then we can start it. But I'm not gonna do that today. Now, a few years ago, we moved uh, a couple bins and put them on hopper bottoms. Well, we're gonna do the same thing again soon. See these four bins right here? There's one, two, and three and four, you get it. We're gonna take two of those bins, we'll pick out which ones we want, and we're gonna move them. We're gonna head over here, and this is where we have our hoppers for clean seed for the year. As you can tell, we've moved a couple of them. Well, there's a location right here that's got a bunch of junk, and we have moved those two little bins over on those little pads, and all this junk is getting cleaned out of here. We're gonna put some shale ground, which is, I'll show you what shale looks like. For those that don't know, it's basically junk ground. You can't grow anything on it. And that's the nice thing is it makes the ground sterile. So this is called shale. It's got a blue tinge to it. Got lots of clay material in it. And so we'll lay a bunch of that after we clean this all out. We'll lay it all down here, pack it good. Take the digger derrick, drill holes, pour little concrete pads like that and bolt the uh, legs to it. And then we'll move the bins on top of it. So that way nothing grows here and uh, yeah, we can put bins and make things light a lot nicer. But as you can tell, there's, there's quite a bit of junk and uh, concrete pads that need to be moved and a lot of other stuff over here too. So let's get to work because uh, I got a lot of work ahead of me.
hope they don't take offense. I'm driving this time. Last time we went across for a big run with the rabbits. Didn't get much work done. I'm pretty sure my uh, pops enjoys that Can-Am Defender. Yeah, they're nice. Oh, don't get me wrong. They're very nice, actually. And they've come in handy so many times on this farm. Now that we have one, it's like, how do we manage to do things without them? Oh, we did, but they're just nicer to have. As you see, a yard is for sale. I, it's not by inches. Most of the stuff is cleaned up around here. Just got the slabs, a few miscellaneous rocks that are laying there and a couple uh, concrete things. But what I want to do right now is uh, go grab the front end loader and let's shove all of these big concrete slabs, break them up and put them in a pile. And then I can bring shale in and level it all out and then I will remove that uh, concrete pile of miscellaneous round bin circle stuff. Awesome, let's go get the loader. putting two hoppers right here. So this is probably close to enough fill to finish that area. But I'm gonna keep hauling. We're gonna keep filling in all this up here, all the way up to those other bins to make sure we have enough, level it all off because if it works out, keyword if it does, we might be adding bins all the way over to the other uh, bin there. So this whole row from those hoppers all the way down will be bins. Now, these are all flat bottom bins that we're gonna do, and they're not gonna be brand new, but we are adding a ring and a half, and we bought some other bins, and we're having them moved, and we have two bins that we need to move to. If it all works, we're gonna have some storage here, guys, but nah, I don't know how it's gonna work out, because if we can't get those bottom rings, we can't pour those uh, slabs, we can't move the bins, so, Hopefully the factory, we order them, uh, so when did we order them? A month and a half, uh, two months ago? Hopefully we get those rings soon so we can start putting those in and get bins. Because uh, we have the most amount of acres planted this year, which means if we have an average year, we're gonna run out of storage. We kind of ran out of storage a little bit last year, <laughs> technically, and there's a possibility we'll probably run out of storage this year. So, yeah, got to keep busy, but it's going to be sweet. Bins all the way across, if we can make it happen. Tis the season. I had to keep up with bales, hey, down in Arizona. It actually is really nice. Don't judge. The face, keeps the face intact. All right, loader time. My guy just told me what to do. He's been here working hard. I've been at home under the weather. I'm feeling great, feeling great now. So I'm ready to be a little talking tough driver. What a beautiful day. This is awesome. 
Oh, it's good working weather. Good working weather with good working machinery. See all this concrete? That's all old bin rigs. All those bins that we've ripped up and moved. We got more concrete coming this way. Oopsie, my bad. Forgot to latch it. I thought I did. Thought I did. I didn't. I think it'll stay in there. It's pretty, uh, pretty wet clay. So I'll take it easy. But huh. all right. I'll remember better next time. This shale is about useless for anything in agronomy. When it comes to making foundations, well, it works pretty good. I don't know if I'd build a house on top of it, but when it comes to putting footings in the ground and keeping weeds from growing, it works really good. So that's why we get it. And it's free, it's on our land. It's nice, good stuff. I have to admit, a little bit skeptical about using the remotes as your steering sector, but he's doing it. It's working. Attaboy. Getting it back. The old sector. Hanging out back here. It's due. It's due. We'll get a new one. It's okay. We'll get the bud back inside. Get out of this heat, as you can see. Heat. I'm trying to protect myself. Factors are more important than flush, right? So we got to protect that and get that in the building. I'll follow him home. Make sure he gets there. He's driving it like a bulldozer. One lever goes one way. One lever goes the other way. Remember our little uh, incident, my, my incident, my, my little incident with the PTO shaft, the Minneapolis Moline jogger. She's still packed full of urea. Nice and tight like. So I'm gonna take off this old PTO shaft. That's in a jump rope shape. And I'm gonna take a pipe and I'm gonna weld the pipe over the ends of this and make a temporary, temp, temporary, you know what I mean. And then hook up to a tractor, run it to get fertilizer out of this thing so that we can park it for good let's pull this jump rope off Ooh, that grease circ's doing a lot of good ah. that's why they hired me for this kind of work why didn't i drive the can am over here come on girl Right. I think the trick is I just need to floor it from here on out. Yep, that's working. Hey, there you are. Hey girl, sorry we cut the season short on you. Ooh, hey, that's gonna get fixed up someday. It's gonna be a classic. Um, I don't see the PTO yoke. I thought it was sitting there. No one told me they took it. All right, all right. Must be at the farmyard somewhere. See ya. Oh yeah. She running like a top. <laughs> it's all good. Someone drug a carcass back here. Something wasn't hooked up tight. That or one of those old hoses that we took off was brittle or who knows. But we won't be tackling that thing until we get a new steering sector anyways and then it'll be fixed and won't be puking oil like that everywhere. At least we can get all three of them in here. Kobe. <gasps> what do you think? What's going on, huh? 
Yeah. This is our junk pile that accumulates behind the shop throughout the year. It's about due for that annual cleaning. Yep, we'll get to that.